Hello Stitchers. Well, it's the end of the month again. Can we believe it? Um, don't know where these months go to. It almost seems like yesterday that I made last month's recording. Um, so, all I'm going to talk to you about this time, um, obviously I'll show you updates on my whip, although it's not a huge amount of, of uh, progress to show you, I'm afraid. Um, I was going to show you what I have been up to, and I've got a new tag um, for October, if anybody's interested, which is the Stitchy Spot tag. Um, but we'll start off at the beginning. What have I been doing this month? Well, <laughs> apart from being ill, because um, I've been ill quite a bit, um, I've actually, oh, excuse me, let me get myself a bit more comfortable. Um, I've been bobbin winding. Um, I've spent practically two weeks solid bobbin winding. Um, but I've got all my hayed on bobbins now, which taken two boxes. But just look at the colours, they are so pretty. Lots and lots of purples, which of course is my favourite colour. That's box number one, I've put the picture on the front of it, you know, just in case I should forget. Actually, I don't think I would do. Um, box two, there's not so much in. Just a few in box two. Couldn't, couldn't quite fit it all in one box. That's 89 colours all wound. Um, then I've got my Mirabilia, which that's the one I'm doing for the stitch along, if you remember, which is Mermaid of Atlantis. No, it's not Mermaid of Atlantis at all. It's Mermaid of the Pearls. I'm lying to you. I don't even have Mermaid of Atlantis. <laughs> it's because me and my mum were looking at Mirabilia patterns yesterday. Um, and this, compared to the Haid, this just looks ridiculous because <laughs> this is all the threads from my Mirabilia. Ta da! <laughs> it seems like it was hardly worth doing. But there we go, along with my pretty beads. Got lots of pretty beads for her. There's a lot of those, gosh. Some bigger ones. I've never used bigger ones, I've only ever used pretty beads before. I love this colour. That is so pretty. I love that. And I've got a few crystal treasures, she says. I'll get them out. Can't do it that way around. Mm -hmm. This is number 13003. And they just look like little green flowers. If you can see those. And then this one's like, it looks like a shell heart, which this is what she's holding in her hand. That one. Yeah. But that's my Mirabilia. Oh, look at this colour as well. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Anyway. That's my Mirabilia. Shut. And then I put all my DMCs onto bobbins. So we've got one box. I've got more than I thought. Two boxes. Three boxes. Those are on the DMC. And I'm running out of room because I was going to fall over and crash. And then in this box, I've got anchors on that side. I've got Madeira on that side. And I have to say, if you've never tried Madeira, Madeira silk, you want to try, I mean I know I've not used any other silks other than Madeira, but they are lovely, such, such nice silks to work with. And then I've got loads of Krynik and blending filaments in various colours. I use those mainly for my cards, to add a bit of sparkle to my cards. So, and that has taken me weeks to do. Just praise the Lord for those little plastic bobbin winders, because I <laughs> don't know how I would have done it if it hadn't been for that. So that was that. Oh, and then my fabric of the month from Jodry Designs. Um, the limited edition this month is Fall Trees. Seems weird for a British company to be using the term fall because in the UK we don't use fall like you do in America and Canada. And I'm not sure about Australia. I don't think we use it in Australia, but I'm not sure. Um, you know, to us it's just autumn. We don't have fall. At all. So it seems weird for a British company to use the term fall. Um, but anyway, this is called Fall Trees, and just as is typical for Jodry Design, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Because I must say, I wasn't sure when I first saw it on the website. I 
thought, mm, you know, but I thought, you know, I'll get it anyway because it's pretty fabric at the end of the day, isn't it? But oh, it's gorgeous. And I hope you're gonna, it's going to show a true representation of the colour. But it's sort of like reds and pinks. There's a bit of almost like blue in it. And because I get the... Um, I get the opal one. It's 28 count opal Brittany. And it's just so pretty. It really is. And what I like as well is that all the ends are already, you know, pre um pre sewn. So when you do come to use it there's no fiddling around with the ends. But it's just so pretty. So that was that. Now I'm just gonna waffle a bit as I fold this up because I want to get the room tidy because, as you've probably been able to guess, I don't know, I'm not in my usual dingy dining room. Um, this is my new craft room. Well, craft room stroke my niece's bedroom stroke the cat room. has a triple purpose, this room. But, I mean, I wish I had, it's only a two-bedroom house. Um, I wish I had three bedrooms because I'd love to be able to keep a room just for the girls and, like, for any guests that come or what other people do really but um, you know I'd love to have another room plus then use one room simply for craft stuff um, and although I've done this lovely craft room it's not actually going to be somewhere that I probably won't sit in here and craft so often well not uh, not cross stitch anyway just because as, as you'll see when I show you around shortly there's nowhere nice to look and I like a nice view <laughs> you know because at least looking out my living room window I've got trees I've got a field opposite you know it's not a busy road in fact it's, it's a quiet road but you know you do see people going up and down and I just like to because I don't get out much um, I just like to remember that I am part of the human race you know that there are other people there are other lives going on but the window out here there's just nothing to look at it's just um, roofs and birds it's a pity that the house, if I could just pick the house up and angle it, just sort of, what, 30 degrees to the right, um, you've got all the hills, <laughs> you know, the hills looking out, out over, well, like those of you, well, I know one person on YouTube does live in this area, but um, if you knew, like, Hay Hall over towards Wigan, um, you can look out towards Hay Hall and all the, it's so beautiful at Hay Hall, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's an old um, country, like country manor, like those of you that, I don't watch Downton Abbey, but um, I wish I did actually, but by the time I'd heard, because I don't watch much TV, but I watch YouTube and, and DVDs and films, but I don't actually watch much TV TV, <laughs> um, apart from Scylla, <gasps> those of you in the UK, have you been watching Scylla? Oh, just love it, I pre-ordered the DVD actually, because my mum and dad always used to say I was born in the wrong era because I just grew up on, you know, 60s music and like, oh, oh I've just loved Scylla. Anyway, waffling, me and my waffles. What have you even seen? Oh, looking out the window. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't know what I'm going on about anyway. Oh, that was it. Hey, Hall. Yeah, um, it's like a Downton Abbey, you know, it's, um, it's a, um, what do you call those houses, like grand houses? Oh God, my head! I tell you, anybody who has fibromyalgia or me will tell you about fibro fog or brain fog. It's just ridiculous, you know. I used to be intelligent. I went to university. I've got a degree. You wouldn't think so now. My brain is just mush. Anyway, yeah, the whip. Right, let's stop waffling. Yeah, I'll show you my craft room shortly. Now, my whip, I'm afraid, I should have got this off first actually, there isn't that much to show you because I've not been well again, I've had a bad month health wise, um, and I've been sorting out um, all my uh, flosses and what have you, so I haven't actually got that much stitching done. I've got the small, the 8 to 10 inch. Um, Structures came from the Millennium Frame as well, which I was pleased about because I had the 12 to 14 on and they were too big. Just wait, I've ordered some 36 inch, but well, my mum ordered them for my birthday, not my birthday, till May. Um, Christmas, she ordered them for Christmas as an early Christmas present. Um, and those, I'm still waiting for those because I need them for my um, heaven and earth, so I hope it's going to be here by then. 
Um, but this is my progress. Wrong way around. <laughs> You've seen the back of my work anyway. Um, this is my progress on my whip. Can't get a good view. I think when I showed it you last month, I think I'd, well, I'd done all of that and I'd done down to about here. So I'm afraid all I've done is just the fireplace. Done a little pot of ferns there. Um, a little parcel. Part of the floor. And this big bit here, it doesn't look like anything yet, but that's actually, it's a toy chest. And um, that, that's the lid of it there, and there's some, there'll be some toys in there. Um, but then I've just got the rest of, oh, horrible another basket of flowers there, which I hate these flowers because it's just confetti city. Um, the rest of the floor, I'm in a wardrobe up that side, and then we're done. Oh, it's killing me holding it up. So, that's that. I say not much to show you really. I don't think I've even done a card yet this month. Right, so now I will show you my craft room. I'm going to attempt to tidy up at the same time, but let's see if we can do this. So I'll just take off the tripod. Right, so this is now the second attempt, at, well no, it's the third attempt at this because I First of all, I'd spent ages recording it and waffling and then realised that there was no sound on and the second attempt was just, third attempt was just rubbish, so here we go again. So this is now my new craft room, which is also my niece's room and the cat's room. Okay, so just ignore that bit for now, ignore that for now. Right, so first of all, we have a cat. That's mackerel. Um, and that is my desk. Um, it's got my sewing machine on it. And also for when my nieces are here, it's got their pencils on it. Um, little bin. Yeah, so there's that. And that's my nieces stuff. That's all their craft stuff. Um, I'll just show you this as well. It was my youngest niece's birthday um, this month. And she's always been showing an interest in my cross stitch and wanting to help. So she's 10 now, which is when I started. So I bought her this, well, you can see it, it's like a, a first cross stitch, it's on binker with wool um, and it's a butterfly because she knows I love butterflies. So I was going to sit down with her last weekend and do it but a friend was here so we, we couldn't really do it but when we get some time when it's just the two of us we're going to sit down and do that. And I've, I've promised her that if she does it and if she enjoys it then I'll buy her a proper one. So. That was that. And you can see I've just made this a bit smaller. This is what the cat this is a cat's kitty city. Um so that's a bit smaller. I mean it's still oh hello Mikey. I mean it, it's still I mean these are ten foot ceilings and it's almost right up to the ceiling now. It's a lot taller than me. But they've got their little area. They're moving round. That's the girl's, girl's bedside table. I've got a chair that I can sit on if I want to sit and do some stitching in here. Um, I mean, obviously, I take the covers off when I sit on it. I just keep the covers on to, uh, you know, for all the cat hairs and everything. Um, but and the girls use it as well to sit in. And like, in fact, when they were here the the other week, uh, last weekend, um, like my old, uh, my youngest niece Beth was here with her friend Cyan. And I came upstairs at one point and they were both sat on there just like playing with the iPad and stuff. So, you know, at least there's somewhere to sit. And is that a tail under there? Have we got a kitty under there? Or is that where Mikey just went? You can't see, never mind anyway. Um, now this is a bit that's just going to change. Oh, hello baby Jess. Well, I've dropped a book, I wanted to show you that. Um, like I've got my stash down there in that big box and then these drawers my mum gave me and at the bottom those are all the projects I've done I'm finished and I've got my two and I've actually got way more material than I thought some linen there um, I've got some magic guide and sparkly ada White aid, I think there's a blue in there, more magic guide, and then some of my newer pretty ones. And then I've just got an all sorts drawer at the top where I've got like some bead boxes. Um well that's proper sewing stuff. Sewing up for my sewing machine. Um a hook, a 
bobbins, little bag, various bits and pieces, and two spare. Now this stuff, yeah, this that's all here will be moving to here, which is currently a blank wall, but my uncle's going to put up a couple of shelves for me. So that's just above the, the desk. So I'll be able to store this, and this is what I'm going to store. I've got my boxes, which I was just showing you with all my thread in, and there's me, that's the Mahay pattern in that purple folder. Um, and some thread. I've got, and I've got all my magazines. I've got um, a folder with a cross stitch card shop, a folder of cross stitch gold, that's nearly full actually. I've got um, Anchor and DMC shade cards. Then I've got um, Itch to Stitch because um, I'm um, I'm a member of the Cross Stitch Guild here in the UK, which is run by Jane Greenoff. Um, and in fact, um, an Itch to Stitch has just come through the door while I was attempting to edit the first video, um, and it's got a beautiful but because it has loads of of patterns in it. It's got a beautiful butterfly pattern in it. Um, because a lot of her things are very traditional um, and Quaker style which isn't really my thing I like to look at you know the ones that everybody else has done but it's not something I'd stitch myself I mean I do have a few of her pieces which are lovely um, but this butterfly pattern that's in this this month's itch to stitch is lovely um, so anyway that's that and then it's, um, just let me move these because I want to show you those in a minute um in here I've got my hang on open it. These are all cross stitch crazy magazines. Tons of them. I like to keep them because um I like to use them for my my uh, patterns for my cross stitch uh, you know my cards. Um but also I mean they do it does they do have some lovely patterns in them but I think I've got enough <laughs> for me other ones and then under there we've also got World of Cross Stitching. And then I've got a few little books, that one you saw last month, my mini cross stitch motifs. But I've also got these, which if you're new to cross stitching, or if you know somebody who's interested, I highly recommend these two books. Um, these are both by Jane Greenoff, who runs the Cross Stitch Guild. Uh, she also signs, hand signs all of her books as well. Um, this is the Cross Stitcher's Bible, it's the new one, the new edition. Um, and it's just absolutely full of hints and tips and you know oh butterfly um, and about how to you know how to get started it also has a few patterns in it as well but it's it's a really good book um, and this one is just fantastic for it teaches you how to do various stitches um, you know your specialty stitches so anybody who is interested in doing a piece of specialty stitches um, I highly recommend this book um, because I know like Amanda did a great video the other day on road stitching um, and like when she was numbering all you know where you come up and come down that's how just how this is done um, I'll try and show you an example when I opened it first time whoops it came out on road stitches funnily enough um, right cushion stitch for example you know, it's not got the numbers on that one. Um, counted chain stitch. Well, it's typical. The ones I'm picking up at, I wanted to show. It was on the road stitch. Oh, dear. So I'm trying to do this one-handed. That's another thing I like about this book, and she specifically designed it for this reason. Is that it's so easy to sort of, you can stitch in your hand and read at the same time because it's on this spine, so it just stays open. It's brilliant. So, oh, that, that was the page open before that. No, well, I don't know, half road stitch. But as you can see from focus, um, it's got your numbers, like where you come up and come down and what have you. But it is written just it's so simple you know like I said it's like the idiot's guide to you know stitching really because it's just it's brilliant um, and it's got a, um, a pattern or a few patterns in it actually where you can practice using your, spe your specialty stitches so yeah so those are all going to go on my shelf when I get when I finally get it I just need to get a shelf then my uncle will come and put it up so oh and just the last bit of the room not that it's anything interesting 
And I've moved all my niece's stuff, well, say niece's stuff, you know, like the bedding and things, into that cupboard so that when they sleep, just bear with me while I try and stand up, when they sleep, um, that chair just moves over to here and then they can fit a double bed in there. So that's my new stitchy room. Right, and now to the tag. My idea for a tag, um, because I think we're learning all about each other here on Floss Tube, and I find it really interesting um, to know, um, you know, to learn about how you stitch and what you like to stitch and this, that, and the other. Um, but I'm always interested. I try and imagine what people are actually doing, you know, while they're stitching where they are. Um, so my idea for a tag was a stitchy spot. Um, first of all, I want to see your stitchy spot. And then, second of all, I want to see your view from your stitchy spot. Um, and the third part is a question, which is just, um, what is your perfect cross-stitching day? Um, and mine is having the weather to be either raining heavily or snowing heavily. Um, and I'm sat in my stitchy spot, um, just watching everybody struggling outside with the weather while I'm nice and warm inside and I've got the fire on and the dog in front of the fire and a never-ending supply of cups of tea and also a never-ending supply of floss tube videos to watch as well. That is my idea of perfection really. So I'd love to see your stitchy spots and know what your idea of, of um, um, stitchy spot perfection is. Um, and that's it for this month. So, oh no, I've not shown you my stitchy spots. Hang on, <laughs> I'll insert that video now. Right, so this is the view from my stitchy spot. Nice view of the TV and the cat and dog. Got a Yankee candle. Every good stitchy spot has got to have a nice smelly candle. And right, my candles of choice are Yankee. Um, but I also love, here's a heads up those of you that might be going to Ikea this weekend. Um, at the moment Ikea have got these lovely scented candles and they're in like little glass tumblers. And they're only 20 pence each and they're absolutely gorgeous. So if you're heading to Ikea this weekend, pick one up. <laughs> and then this way, that's my, I mean really that's meant for her for me to get things in and out of the kitchen. Which it does, but it also doubles up as a handy little tray with a drink and my glasses and my TV guide, TV remote. And then I've got a nice lava, lava lamp over there, which I like. My lovely big cat pillow. And a nice comfy spot for the cat. There. Oh, and there's one of my, my favourite cross stitch that I've done on the wall there. My Mirabilia Millennium Angel. And then just going the other way. We have another cat, <laughs> Derek. Uh, no, you're not Derek, you're Roger. Then I've got a nice big table with my sewing box and my hand cream, hand wipes, my oat jar, my telephone, and another place for the cats to chill out with me. And usually you'll find Holly asleep next to me there. And usually in the evening, you get a cat or two behind. So this is what my stitchy spot looks like, just have to bear with me getting up, it's not easy without my walking stick. Oh yeah, that's what my stitchy spot looks like. A nice comfy spot in front of the window, in front of the telly, with my smelly candles and lots of storage around it. That's my stitchy spot. My life. So that was my stitchy spot so that is definitely it for now um so i shall see you all at the end of next month unless anything else crops up that uh, i fancy uh, making a video for so i look forward to hearing all about your stitchy spots and i'll see you next month bye